Here in the South, music is almost as important as breathing. From bluegrass in the Appalachian Mountains and gospel in the Bible Belt to blues in Memphis and soul in Muscle Shoals, it's all American music born here in the Deep South and celebrated by a new generation. Welcome to Southern Fried Music TV. Two, three, four. <laughs> Welcome back to Southern Fried Music TV. We're tickled to death to be here. My old buddy Carl and I. We've been we've been laying some miles down here in the last few weeks, Carl. We have. We have, <laughs> we've done we've been doing some traveling, but we've got some awesome shows coming up for you. Uh, this one is really unique in that the people that we have on the show that we're featuring this week are songwriters, not necessarily performers, but uh, three men from Nashville, Tennessee, that have written thousands of hits and songs. Uh, I was I was. Kind of excited to learn. I didn't know that Larry Cordell and uh, Carl Jackson years ago had worked with Ricky Skaggs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they told us that story. And of course, Jerry Sally, tremendous songwriter who just got married a few weeks ago. I, I saw that, that on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. But these guys are phenomenal, and they performed together. And they do this every Monday night at the Station Inn in Nashville. If you happen to be up that way, but Carl had an opportunity to sit down, and we, I guess, talked to him for about an hour, and I got to stand by and I learned so much it was so interesting but I'm telling you you're gonna enjoy the show yeah these guys are a, a, a history of country music just in themselves between these three guys there's no telling how many hit songs that's right that they have written that you would recognize the names of the songs and then they're still writing they're still very prolific they're still wow. writing on a regular basis and getting songs recorded and I think the most into the funnest part the most interesting part is when we started talking about the the death of, of country music and, and music <laughs> yeah. row. You know, one of them has written a song about the the, the, the mm -hmm. music died on or music row or yeah, country died right. on music row, something like that. And, uh, and and they're very candid comments about how they feel about the direction country music's going in. And made the statement that in this day and age that George Jones or uh, Merle Haggard might have a rough time getting on the radio. Yeah, they'd probably <laughs> never have a chance to get on the radio, all, all those old legends. But it is going to be a great show. We're going to learn a lot about songwriting and about country music and uh, just all kinds of fun things like that with three of the greatest writers in Nashville when we come back here on Southern Fried Music TV. That's right. Well, as you know, we've been spending the weekend in Auburn, bluegrass on the plains, and I'm uh, proud to have joining me here uh, three of the biggest names in, in, in country music, bluegrass music, uh, writers. There's not much you guys haven't had your finger on in, in country music and bluegrass music in the past uh, 20 years or so. So uh, proud to welcome Carl Jackson, Jerry Sally, and Larry Cordell, uh, three of the most prolific songwriters. Uh, it, 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 if we we could you take up the whole show naming hits that you guys have have written, but uh, just, uh, just 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 kind of catch us up. You guys are doing a lot of stuff together and a lot of different individual projects. You just guys have a lot of things going on. Well, we're always thrilled every time we get to play together. We've been doing it for a long time, and it's a it's an honor and a joy. Just every time we get to be on stage together, or just sit around and pick together, sit around and visit together. Yeah, and these guys are like brothers. And, uh, Love them dearly. Mm -hmm. How did you guys get? Old. How did you guys get to be friends in the, in the business? Gosh, it, it goes back a long way. Jerry and I yeah. uh, met through a, a mutual, mutual friend, yeah, uh, mutual Charlie publisher. Monk. Mm -hmm. uh, introduced Jerry and I, and we got together and wrote. And Larry and I met. Uh, he was uh, already writing for Ricky Skaggs. I was out on the road, and he was <clears> subbing yeah. for him. Uh, yeah. and we met. 
Yeah, 25 years I, ago. I subbed in the band. And, yeah. And actually, I guess it was around the time I had the record deal on Columbia, wasn't it? And Ricky let me open for him a couple just, of times. I think it was. I think it was right at the tail end of that, you know. So I, I would have been about 84, 85, something well, like that. Well, that'd be after 85, because it's after I am Somewhere, there. Somewhere in there. It's been a long time. You know, <laughs> yeah. We, we kind of met through Ricky, and yeah. Jerry and I met through Charlie Monk. And yeah. we, and I met Cord through Carl. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just... Uh, <laughs> It's a roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are almost unique with being so prolific, such pro- prolific writers, and that you're actually musicians too. I've met a lot of writers over the years who, when you see them at a writer's showcase or something, you don't want to hear them. But you guys are good. You guys are good singers, good musicians, all around. Uh, it, talk about that and, and and how that's just well, unique I, to you I guys. Think that's what makes us unique. I mean. There's a lot of folks in town that write with each other all the time, mm-hmm. but we uh, we actually got together years ago, twenty some years ago probably now, yeah. and was we were getting ready for a Bluebird show I think, yeah. and a fellow named Jim Rushing who was a mentor of all ours was playing with us back then, mm-hmm. and we Carl's such a I mean one of the greatest musicians that ever lived in any genre. And so he always did all the lead picking, and we would just accompany, and whoever's turn it was would sing lead, and then, like when Carl sings lead, I would sing the high, and Larry would sing the low, and Larry sings lead, Carl sings the high, and I sing the low. Mm-hmm. And so we just figured out on whose song, you know, yeah. the, the blend would be best on, on, you know, the different parts, and we realized we had a pretty cool sound together, yeah, you yeah. know? And we just, plus we just love being around yeah. each other. This never gets yeah. old for us, so. And it, you know, and it started, I mean, I started out as as a musician. You know, yeah. I didn't think about singing much when I first went on the road at 14. I mean, I was already singing some, but it, I was I was a banjo player. You know, I, mean, I, I went to work with Jim and Jesse at 14. Yeah, and uh, that was they let me sing a tune usually on every show. I remember I remember singing "Gentle on My Mind." Believe it or not, that's oh, wow. that was my solo tune mm-hmm. with 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 Jim and Jesse. And uh, strangely enough, then to get to go with Glenn Campbell a few years after that. Right, right. But uh, you know, and I got to sing a little I, I actually. Sang Sang baritone with them, mm-hmm. uh, but the, and I, I never really thought about being able to sing that high as I sing now. But then I went to work with Glenn Campbell. And I had to sing all the high parts with him. So <laughs> start singing above him, you just naturally <laughs> you go high, I guess. You know. Yeah. So, but uh, I st- started out as an instrumentalist, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's just kind of evolved into that with these guys, and they're. Cause a 
frost to shine cold mornings on the grass outside the door just like before tell me more is this still planning marriage sometime soon can you still reach out and almost touch the moon do the old songs still ring out through the hills for days and Did you all set out to be songwriters or did you just kind of develop the songwriting ability after being in the music, music business for a while? Well, individually for me, I mean, it started out first, somebody asked me what the first thing I wrote. First thing I wrote was a banjo in instrumental mm -hmm. at about 10 or 11 years old, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I branched off around 14 or so, probably wrote the first song I ever wrote with lyric. Uh, still didn't really think of myself as a songwriter. Got with Glenn, wrote a few more things, got the courage to play them for him. And he goes, mm -hmm. man, these are good. Let's record these, you know. <laughs> I want to sign you to my publishing company and so on. And it just kind of fell into place. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and now I'll let these guys answer for themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I started writing songs when I was 16, mm -hmm. but I really started out wanting to be a singer. You know, I was performing on stage at 10 years old and doing shows. And, uh, my dad played banjo growing up, so obviously I was around bluegrass my whole life. And I, I grew up in southern Ohio, and there was a guy named Tom D. Hall, with us, which was a huge influence on me. He was from Kentucky, where my grandpa was from. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up listening to his songs and starting to study. I used to, as a kid, I'd write out all the lyrics to his songs to learn them, you know. And I thought, man, this guy really knows how to put something together, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that was really when I thought, man, I don't know how to try to be a songwriter, you know, for, mm -hmm. from listening to his stuff. But as it all evolved, I mean, I, I, my, the most performing I do are with these guys. I mean, I do, I do some solo stuff too, but I really set out to be, I wanted to come to Nashville to be a star, but I was writing songs all along. And then when I first started having success in songwriting, mm -hmm. I thought, well, I kind of like sitting at home here and writing songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's kind of how that happened for me. Lately, Grace hasn't been herself. And he's noticed the change. Placing all her things He'd make a joke They'd both laugh And blame it on old age But it's not funny anymore She can't remember Who 
I was just pretty much a singer first, I think, you know, but um, sometime in my college years, you know, I really, I really don't really know why. I just uh, I think maybe because I wasn't getting played quite, quite as much as I wanted to, I started trying to piece songs together for me. I don't, I don't have any idea, but really, I don't know. I don't know, it just came from me to... <laughs> two or three things that I wanted to try to write, you know, and then I, I told somebody earlier that um, I had a little handful of songs, you know, I was, I had a degree in accounting and I was going to get away from music, I wasn't going to fool with that anymore, but I wasn't going to be very good at that, I found out pretty soon, so uh, I had a little handful of songs, you know, Ricky Skaggs and I were raised a mile apart, and by the time I was back in college, you know, he was he was working around with some big people, Emmy and Willie Nelson, the first one and then another, because he was such a great musician. And I asked him if he'd listen to some of these songs, you know, and just, just so I'd have a, because people would say to me around at a party or somewhere, you know, why don't you play that song you played over here the other night? You know, but I, so I knew people had asked me for them, but I didn't really know if they were good going to Nashville with them or something and Ricky for Ricky and some of these things. So, yeah, you know, that was pretty good. He said, fine. I said, I think it was good. He said, if I had a big record deal, I'd be, I'd, I'd be asking you for some of this. So,
guilt. But the evidence will show that murder was committed down on Music Road. Oh, the steel guitars no longer cry. Turned all up in your face And old Hank himself wouldn't have a chance On today's radio Since they committed murder Down on Music Row Come on, lift it Is that no one would buy them old drinking and cheating song? Well, there ain't no justice in and the heart makes are cold. You know, there's been an awful murder. Guitars no longer cry, and you can't hear fiddles play. With drums and rock and roll guitars turned all up in your face, and rock kilo would never change. <laughs> To pack up and go back home There's been an awful murder Down on Music Road <laughs>I don't know if you saw the I Heart Radio thing the other night, but I mean, of the songs that was on a two-hour show, you could take any song on it except for that little Justin Moore kid's uh, If Heaven Wasn't So Far Away and maybe one more thing. 
that were actually all the rest of them songs you could have put the lyric inside it was the same, same beat thing. melody yeah, every, exactly. every time yeah. which is i suppose <laughs> I, I, they panned the crowd i could see every soul in the crowd singing the words right, so right. evidently it means something to them it just doesn't to us well i tell you a friend of mine uh, in nashville that you guys may know posted something on uh, facebook recently and it was a, a comparison between a classic country well-written song and these beautiful lyrics to a current country song <laughs> that said i drive a truck and, and i drink beer and that's it you know yeah. <laughs> basically yeah. Yeah. Well, we and, and it has a hard beat you know, to it. we yeah. miss the stories yeah. i mean we just yeah. and the melodies and, I mean, and the people <laughs> yeah. that really <laughs> thought about <laughs> melodies <laughs> yeah all yeah. of that yeah you know because yeah. now i mean about one melody works and pretty good you know what really makes it clear to me that it's a shame it's like i mean jerry mentioned our our dear friend and uh, and hero tom, tom t hall mm -hmm. i mean we have to be perfectly honest tom t hall is one of the greatest songwriters that's ever walked the face of the earth absolutely It'd be pretty, yeah, pretty absolutely. tough for tom to get a cut right now yeah, it would yeah. be yeah because yeah. he writes great songs you know I mean, he's in a, he's jim rushing I mean, songs uh, all down yeah. Yeah, in, in the bluegrass world, they'll still, yeah. that's one thing about it, they'll still cut a great song. Yeah, we get songs still, cut all the time there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know. and we're very thankful for that. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we don't want to, we don't begrudge anybody. We're happy for anybody that makes a living yeah, as a songwriter yeah. and does, you know, we're not putting people down by any means. It's but, just, I mean, if we had written, the, here's the truth. Mm -hmm. If we had written a lyric to one of these songs we've been talking about when we first came to town, <laughs> you would not be sitting here talking to us. We'd right be that's right. You know, that's and that's right. the truth. I mean, and we it's kind of it's kind of flipped now. I mean, Merle Haggard couldn't get a deal now. No. Uh, right. I heard that's sad. Yeah, I, I no. read where a radio consultant said that there is no way he stopped loving her today would ever be allowed to be played on country radio. Oh, right, it is considered it's one of the, the greatest, greatest songs country songs ever. Yeah. Yeah. Now that tells yeah. you something is wrong. She thinks yeah. I still care. Uh, yeah, it's gracious. A lot of great gracious. stuff out there. Yeah, so, you know, and it, then, then that bleeds over into artists. I mean, you know, you think Buck Owens we could get a deal today? Oh, yeah. Or Glenn Campbell? Yeah. We should tape a whole show on this. <laughs> I was about to say, I was about to say, yeah. we, could, we could continue right. talking about this yeah. for another hour or so. Yeah. But you guys have got to go to the stage here yeah, in a few minutes. Too. I know you yeah. want to get some supper and, uh, and get, get relaxed a little bit. But thanks for hanging out with Thank us for a few so minutes much. here. Thank Loved you. your set earlier and looking forward to going back over to the stage and seeing you. Thank see, you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you much, guys. Thank you.